This is the finale. It's 12 of 12. I don't know what else to say. If you're listening to part 12 without listening to parts 1 through 11, obviously you're taking shortcuts in your life. And listen, this isn't an advice podcast, but I'm just telling you, you probably ought to start at the beginning. All right, everybody, welcome to Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, the show where we watch the HBO show Watchmen. I'm Scott. And I'm Sam. And welcome today to our finale for our wonderful, wonderful recap and discussion of the uh, the comic book, the graphic novel of Watchmen. Yes, we made um, it. We made it. We did it. This is, you know, rare for me to finish something I start, so I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty excited about this, Sam. How are you doing today? Doing good. How you been? Oh, man, I've been... Living the dream, loving life over here, yes, getting excited sir. about the uh, impending premiere of uh, a show that I think is going to be excellent now. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's coming. You know, they, they finally announced a date, you know, as of this recording, they announced the date of October. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we're, we're getting something good coming, you know, looks absolutely. like. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it looks like it's going to be really awesome. In fact, you know, we know that, I know this is about episode uh, chapter 12, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's what the main pro- focus of the podcast is today. But... But they did release a trailer for uh, the show. Yes, uh, yes the last yes, couple of weeks. Yes. Now I know you you were good enough to to do our fans a favor and recap it for them and give some of your reactions on our website. Right, I know yep. that uh, you got that done for us, and I appreciate yeah. that as I was uh, unavailable. Yep, yep, yep. So you know it was a um um very inter- interesting trailer. You know it got me pumped and excited and everything. You guys can go onto the Nerd Encyclopedia website, of course, and watch it, and of course on our YouTube page. Hmm. Absolutely. You can check it out there. Check out our YouTube page. Check out our website, nerdcyclopedia.com. That is also the name of our flagship podcast. If you haven't checked that out lately, go ahead and uh, do us a good favor and uh, you know subscribe to that one as well. Yep. Um, before we jump into the you know the brass tacks on the graphic novel, which I, I know we're all excited to do, yeah, yeah. Um, I know we wanted to uh, discuss my reaction to the trailer, trailer two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since you didn't get a chance, and your um, you know, we wanted to get your input, Scott, because we need you. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear you your gotta... comments. You know, yeah. we've been discussing this thing for like you know for so long, for you know twelve podcasts and so on uh, and everything. We gotta <laughs> and 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 this is Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, so you know we got to get your your reaction. There's going to be some Watchmen watching. I mean, that's just, I don't know. I mean, if you didn't think that was going to happen, I don't know if you were paying attention to the name of the podcast. Anyway, so so here's my reaction to this thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, a lot more Dr. Manhattan than I thought there was going to be. Ooh, and man. I'm really excited about that. Oh, man, that, that, that reveal at the end and everything. It's like, okay, so I, you, oh, you know what? You go ahead. You you your your reactions first. Go ahead. So Doctor so you know, for me, I really thought that, you know, we weren't gonna be seeing too much of the Doctor Manhattans of the world and uh-huh. and to see to see him show up, uh, you know, more than once to show they're gonna do the effects and they got him light blue, like uh, you know, not like shiny blue. Right. Or like aura e blue. He's just light blue. Right. Looks really good. Right. Um, you know, he's on Mars for some reason, mm-hmm. I guess. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you know, that's pretty nifty. Um you know, it looks like there's going to be some really interesting in in media stuff. Like, uh, it seems like there may be like a hooded justice like TV series. Yeah, like that's a, in universe. A, like some sort of hard copy type, you know, docu, you know, something, mm-hmm. you know, um, in 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 universe show, like you said. Yeah, so it's going to be like, you know, uh, it's going to be so cool. I think that having, uh, you know, I, I think having uh, that really seems like Silk Spectre too, right? I mean, it has to be the shade there. Mm-hmm. They're thrown there, right? So that's definitely Lori. I mean, a Lord. You know, yeah, Lori Lori Blake shows up. Yeah, Lori yeah, Blake. Right? She changed her name. Officer now, right? No, she's with the <laughs> FBI. <laughs> she's an yeah. FBI agent. So yeah. I'm it's, just as just as going over the you know the last issue. I'm I'm curious to see what the um um you know how her life has been since you know her and um Dan went undercover, right? Right, absolutely. I mean, they—that's—that's that's something we're going to talk about here in, a, in the chapter. Obviously, mm-hmm. if, if you've done the reading before class, you would know. <laughs> <laughs> if you if like, you go- lasted this long, like Scott said, you know, <laughs> right. you you either either been doing some cheating or something. But um, right. But yeah, we'll get into that discussion. But yeah, like Scott was saying, you know, Lori shows up and um, you know, um, is now FBI agent. Mm-hmm. So it's um, it's it's just some really crazy stuff going on in that trailer. 
um, you know, the guy's eating, um, when he, as he's watching that Hooded Justin video, he's eating a can of beans. Is that look yeah. like, you know, looks like, um, it is a callback to what, uh, Rorschach does in the, in the actual comic. Um, my question is, and, and I think this should jump that's, that's in the back of my brain. So this, this show is supposed to be like a, a sequel looks like it's pretty much looking more and more like a sequel to the actual comic. Mm -hmm. Um, are we supposed to, is, is the, is the casual viewer that's looking at this, not me and you, cause we know the Watchmen lore and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, are, are they supposed to be, uh, watch it? Are they supposed to have knowledge of the movie? Um, I think that I, I don't know. I've heard that they're supposed to, um, not like they're just not supposed to care about, you know, like the movie never happened. It's like a continuation of the actual version of the story in the book. So that's sort of weird to me. It's, it's not too many versions of books out there that they do a sequel to, you mm -hmm. know, then and actually put it as a TV show without act, without it actually having some sort of, you know, prior material ahead of time. So this right. is sort of unique in a way they're doing an actual sequel to a book. In video, yep. you know, in 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 TV show type form, I've I've I don't know of any other, um, you know, medium or IP or whatever that they've done that to. I mean, have you? I, I you know, uh, something like this is is unique because there's not a lot of stories like Watchmen where it's this complicated and rich, and mm -hmm. you can pretty much plug in and say, listen, if you want to know about what happened that caused you know like 35 years ago, if you want to know what happened 35 years ago, you can go read about it. It's out there. The mm -hmm. lore exists. Now, I think in a lot of cases, like Game of Thrones did a real good job of this, mm -hmm. where they were they were lore-centric, but they didn't really beat you over the head with it, right? Right. And the source material existed, so you could go read, you know, The World of Ice and Fire, or Blood and, you know, Fire and Blood, or, mm -hmm. you know, those other, the real, the novel versions, if you wanted more. Right. But because everywhere, it's like everywhere you put down a, a foundation here, mm -hmm. what you get is, like, um... Like really firm bedrock. So mm -hmm. anywhere you go, you're going to be under on firm footing because everything is constructed so well in the book. Mm -hmm. So continuations of that are still going to be good. All right, they're yeah, still going to have but, a rich, a rich backstory to draw from. Well, yeah, I mean, the it's a, it's a sort, you know, but does it require the casual viewer of having to go and read those books in order to understand this? You know, it's not like I, Game of Thrones had a um um. It's not like they did a sequel to Game of Thrones or, you know, the Song of Ice and Fire before, you know, mm. um, after Ice and Fire came out. You know, they right. actually told the story as they were, you know, doing the they the Game of Thrones was essentially is essentially the story of Ice and Fire as it was going along. This mm -hmm. is a sequel. This is literally a sequel to the, you know, to the um to the actual book. So me and you we're looking at it as like, okay, we know all the history and everything, but mm -hmm. um my wife for instance, you know, or you know, um someone who's never, you know, watched these, um they're coming at it from who is this, you know, why did all this happen before and why are they referring to a being that's from space? Like this is some weird stuff. Dr. I mean, Manhattan? Dr. Manhattan, who the hell is he? You it know. looks like they got they got like <laughs> masks and they have like Dr. Manhattan festivals and yeah why why did, why did all this I I I just hope that Damon Lindelof and company you know the showrunners and creators are coming at this from a way where it could it could be accessible without having um you know I guess the casual viewer not that I'm looking out for them or anything like that but the casual viewer um not having to do their homework beforehand, you know, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. when watching a TV show, do you necessarily want to do homework, you know, to, um, unless you're really all that into it? I don't know. I think the best TV shows let you do homework. Okay. And, and, and that's what, that's what makes a really good source material. Okay. And it's not just, and it isn't just, uh, obviously, mm -hmm. I mean, Game of Thrones is the example I picked, but you can do, mm -hmm. say the same thing about even like, um, I don't know, Gotham okay. or Supergirl. Okay. Or, Anything like that, where they have basically this this uh, you know long you know long term mythology that they can draw from essentially whenever they want. Right, right. And that that to me is something that is you know mm -hmm. it's indicative that you've picked a good source material. Mm -hmm. And and having you know and and having that sort of plate set up really well. Mm -hmm. And you know I think that someone like for people like you or me, mm -hmm. this trailer here is just littered 
littered with yes. references yes. to the source material. Yes, yes. Everything, yes. even, you know, Lori Blake, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Archie's in this trailer, you know, flying around. I saw around. that, yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Explaining the new, um, why all the cops are wearing the masks and how mm-hmm. that makes sense in the context of, you right. know, the story right. we've read. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to it now, and 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 this is this is probably something that's escalated my excitement, and and mm-hmm. honestly, is making me feel good about picking this project. <laughs> something yeah, to do. It's, it looks really good. It's really going to be, um, you know, for HBO. It, I, I hope it's. I don't know if it's going to get on the level of Game of Thrones. It may or may not, but this is mm-hmm. HBO's first um, endeavor into a comic book property. You know, yeah. they've. I mean, all the other. You know, a lot of other channels have gotten into. You know, some. Um, you know. Uh, comic book stuff but hbo actually handling this because they're the sort of prestige um mm-hmm. premium channel there they're actually delving into a um um area that they they really don't have a lot of experience in and it's i'm kind of curious to see how it goes out but I, I do like like you said i'm glad we picked this project because um th- this is a universe that we love with this mm-hmm. is a universe that we think has a lot of rich source material like you said that we can um that a lot of people um, can actually come into and we can actually share with them, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like you know we're coming at this from a perspective of we're doing this whole podcast talking about the first twelve issues, talking about the Watchmen lore. Um, so excited about it that we're rolling into like the TV show that they can actually come back and do if they don't want to do the reading homework at the very least they can listen to our podcast right. on the way home <laughs> to and from work and get and catch up that way. And that's and that's why we're here, guys. This is the, <laughs> this is the show where we reveal all the spoilers at the end, right? We tell you all the stuff we've been doing. So we are so, your cheat sheet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're and in fact, you know, I know in a lot of places, uh-huh. this this book is assigned as reading in a lot of classes. Yeah. So I, I hope yeah. you know, yeah. coming yeah. semester, we'll get some mm-hmm. people showing up and. Uh, you know, uh, hear from some of you academics. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Talking about like the, um, you know, the deepness and like the, you know, the craziness and um, mm. how it just relates to society. The the um, Watchmen, the sh- the trailer actually, it seems like it's going to really get into like some deep politics and how you know policemen are um are you know this, this old version of history and everything or you know now present you know times and everything is going to really delve into um how um people react to policemen policemen are now with all masks and everything you know mm-hmm. they're that's their reaction to like um you know the coming back of superheroes and stuff oh uh, i'm sorry costume heroes i should say right um, they don't costumed want the, adventurers costume adventurers and everything they don't want mm-hmm. the bad guys to know who they are <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know right. um yeah it's it's, it's going to be really interesting oh man I, I'm really excited for it, guys. I, I hope I hope you get to you know. I hope everyone sticks around and uh, you know listens to us. We're really we've been going through some of our scheduling plans, and you know we're real excited about our coverage. It's going to be a fun fall. Yes. Um. You know, probably looking at the premiere date, assuming, I mean, twelve episodes or so, thirteen episodes. Probably it's going to end around Christmas time. I think something yeah, like that. Something like that. You know, I think it's actually going to be eight. It's going to be eight to ten. It's not going to be a you know more than that. So why does HBO hate me that much? Uh, hey. You cut Game of Thrones down to six when it needed 13. I mean, I, <laughs> you know what? Let's not go there. Okay. okay. That's right. This is a Watchmen podcast, not, not a neurodendum about Game of Thrones. We said our piece about that. <laughs> yep. And if you want to listen to it, go to our website. Hey, <laughs> it's right there. com. Feel free to check it out, you know. Uh, and, then, uh, oh, and, and to finish the house cleaning stuff, you know, we, we talked about the um, – you know, um, going to nerdsacopedia.com. Um, yeah. You can listen to all our available podcasts on anywhere that you like listening to your podcast. Number one, right on our website, nerdsacopedia.com. And That's of a course, good way places to do it. It's like, you know, um, uh, Stitcher, uh, iTunes, um, Apple Podcasts now. There you go. Um, Spotify, you know, wherever yeah. you listen to your favorite podcast, we are there. You can follow us on social media, on Instagram, um, Facebook, um, uh, da, 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 Twitter at Nerd Encyclopedia, yeah. obviously. And, and if you're a uh, if you're a Comcast customer, oh, you can say Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen into your remote control, and you can pull up episodes of ours right from YouTube on your cable box. So that's another way you for can you. see our ugly faces. Yes, on your big screen TV. 
we're selective about the times we do that to you. So most of them, <laughs> most of these are just going to be the audio, which we know you're okay with because you're here. Uh, we'll just torture you with our, um, you know, um, our, our voices. There's a reason, Sam, that we do podcasting instead of <laughs> vlogging. <laughs> we pick this stuff on purpose, guys. It's there okay. We go. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah, that's where you can, um, you know, catch all of our stuff at. So take a listen. Yeah, try it out. If you like it, great. Let us know if you don't keep it to yourself. Yep, yep. And make sure you email us, too, with all your comments at, um, you know, um, nurse at nursecyclopedia.com. And also, if you have questions or feedback about this podcast, watching Watchmen at nerdcyclopedia.com is the way to get a hold of us with stuff like that. We'd love to hear from you. Feedback, questions, things you're looking for as we uh, head into our live coverage of Watchmen Season 1 on HBO. All right, we're really looking forward to that. Now, without further ado, let's get into this last issue. You know, the Uh, Big Bang of the whole series. I'm excited. All right, so we know, just to recap, I I know it's not been a long time for any of our listeners, but it has been for us. It's been a couple weeks. (laughs) So (laughs) something has happened in New York City. All right, Uh, we know that. Uh, Adrian Veet did it uh, 35 minutes ago. So the thing he says he's done is done. Okay, and chapter twelve is all about the, rea- the w- revealing what that is, mm-hmm. and the reaction to it. And the chapter starts with blood running down a clock, and it is the clock I think in Madison Square Garden. And at midnight, a clock stopped, and there's just carnage, just bodies Whew. everywhere, this everywhere. Is a, a heck of a you know, a heck of a start out to you know to the issue. In um, in in what's going to be? I'm going to start cataloging these illusions, liter, liter, literary references that I see. Okay, we're just mm-hmm. going to start saying them because I've been doing that with a lot of the um, you know, the pure the uh, the mythology analogies. Uh, this is from my from my perspective. Uh-huh. So page one is just a clock with a bunch of blood. We we zoom out. It's Madison Square Garden. There's just bodies everywhere, everywhere. Just dead people, broken windows, broken glass, and the the band. That's playing at Madison Square Garden is Pale Horse. Mm. Now, Pale Horse is also a literary allusion to death because um, death ra- rides a pale horse, the fourth horseman uh-huh. of the apocalypse. So, all these people are culled um, by uh, Ozymandias, and they're all at a concert for a band named after death. Right. Um, uh, it's a. It's, uh, <coughs> It's something that I guess if you were paying attention, it's something that would, it's a foreshadowing mechanism. Um, so if you, if we move on and, and there's just these, these first like five or six pages are just scenes of the carnage of, of this, what, what Veet's done. Yeah. Just, um, a, just imagine if this was a TV show and it was the last, the final episode of a, you know, the mini series and everything. And, mm-hmm. you know, it was just, just just imagine everything is quiet you know this is the carnage you know you may hear like you know horns and everything and um um just all wind and everything this is the carnage from that episode you know and these first few pages are you know screen cuts of you know different places of you know the carnage right there in new york and um it's it's scott alluded to you know, we start off with, you know, all, you know, plug, the blood just dripping down the clock. You only see all these bodies and you see the pale horse. Mm-hmm. Um, the the next few pages slowly, you know, cut in with um, the the giant, um, <laughs> the giant being. <laughs> yeah, the alien monster. The alien monster, the alien yeah. squid. You know, you see that, um, um, you know, go through like the streets and everything until finally... Uh, well, maybe you want to comment on, like, you know, the um, Data Earth stood still, the thing that's... Yeah, been... so get this. The name of this movie theater is Utopia, mm-hmm. and it's broken and destroyed, and, and you can see none of the the name Utopia is obscured or, or interrupted wherever it is. Mm-hmm. So unlike earlier in the book where you could see the word Utopia, now it's just destroyed. Mm-hmm. And you can see that this because the word Utopia, literally the piece that fell off, is standing on top of that, that knothead that Nodhead's body there, Utopia is being, you know, you can't have it. It's impossible, right? There is no Utopia. It's just, you try to do this and it's death, right? It's a commentary, I think, on that. That is brilliant. <laughs> it's excellent, excellent, excellent. And then, like, the other thing about this, and this is something that I'll, I'll, I'll say that I missed, I think, mm-hmm. you know, uh, previously, 
is that these are all <clears throat> characters and places and settings in New York that we've seen mm-hmm. already earlier right. in the book. Right. So Madison Square Garden, this movie theater, the mm-hmm. Gunga Diner where, you know, where Rorschach does all his uh, spying and waiting. Right. And then, you know, the next two, uh, the last two pages are the newsstand pretty much. Right. The characters from the newsstand, including the doctor, uh, Flo, the cab driver, uh, you know, um, and Ugh. her girlfriend, and then the kid and right. Bernie, right? The Bernies, mm-hmm. right? Right. At the end. Now, interesting enough, so the, this this page here with the stronger loving world, and this is the uh, the title of the, the finale. Right. And this page with where you finally see the squid monster <clears throat> in um in all its glory. All its glory. <laughs> all its glory. So here you have the Institute for Spatial Studies. You have the newsstand. You have the Bernies lying dead. Uh, old, you know, the, the old guy that owns a newsstand trying to cradle the kid and failing. Right. And you have all these newspapers blowing in the wind. You see all these questions. Is it war? Is it war? You see women against rape, which is also war, right? Mm-hmm. You see all these things come together. And then you see the one blowing. <clears throat> it's like a comic book or a magazine with an ad here. Mm-hmm. It's an issue of the Black Freighter. And at the end, the bottom here it says the Veet method. Mm-hmm. I will give you bodies beyond your wildest imaginings. My goodness. That is, because that's what this is. Irony this is his finest, and this is the Veet method. <laughs> this is his method, and he is giving you bodies beyond your wildest imagination. It's bodies crazier. upon bodies upon bodies. If you look below that, you do see the um, uh, <laughs> you see blood on what looks like uh, uh, uh the comedian's um button. It's not mm-hmm. his button, but if no. you look below that um book, you see the blood go across. You know what looks like eyes. Mm-hmm. That's a plug, I think, because that's like a charging station, isn't it? Yeah, so but it, it looks like the watch. Well, you're right. It, it looks, looks exactly like, like the um, you know, um, button logo. Oh, absolutely. It looks exactly like it. Yeah. So you know, the uh, Gibbons dropped that in there. So yeah. So the bodies beyond. I mean, bodies upon bodies. You know, he gave he gave them. That is the the beat method here. Beyond you know? your imagining. Oh man. So, so so man. So this is this is carnage. I mean, this is something that. Is shocking, and I think that when you think, "Hey, <clears throat> you know, this is what Ozymandias is doing," you think he's got this plan, and you think about how, you know, uh-huh. uh, you think about what could this be? Like, what could this plan be? Like, how, like, how bad could this be? Right. And you think, oh, maybe he blew up a bomb. And you read through this chapter, and you're like, oh, maybe he blew up a concert. Oh, maybe he blew up an area. Oh man, he blew up a city. Oh man, he killed everybody. <laughs> like it just spot. Like you can see that scale mm-hmm. of of his of his crimes just presented here in a very direct way. Right. Um. And and the way they tell you, they just show you the result. You know, you don't see the mechanism necessarily. You just see the you see what Doctor Manhattan sees. Right. Right. Which is just this carnage. So he's Dr. Manhattan and Laurie arrive at midnight. Right. They teleport in. And Dr. Manhattan sort of, he's getting messed with. He's, he's, these tachyon particles are messing with him a little bit. They're messing with his sense of time. Right. So he's having trouble. He says he comes back later than he thought, which I guess is probably good news. <clears throat> Although I guess he, you know, he's going to be fine. Oh, yeah. He's, uh, he's but, fine. you know, he says, what happened here? It wasn't a warhead detonation. And they finally realize... You know, kind of what's going on. He, he, the, the next, the next couple of pages are a conversation where, where Doctor Manhattan kind of reasons out where the, where is this coming from. Well, uh, um, another thing too is this is one of the first times where he's um, not because of the tachyons. He's not really knowing anything that's that's going on, and he's sort of excited about it. You know, mm-hmm. in his version of excitement. So he he makes the comment of you know he's almost he'd almost forgotten how the excitement of not knowing this yeah. is alluding back to when you know when he was human and everything and you know you just not know, really knowing what's going to happen next he's been saddled with the whole um, I guess burden of the future you know as as how his as how his feelings of it that you know this is coming back to a point where the tachyons is just interfering with all that and everything and he just has no he's trying to figure out. You know, his analytical, you know, uh, uh, lizard brain and everything is trying to figure out everything that's going on. And he's mm-hmm. sort of excited and um, he can't really react the way Lori is reacting to right. all this mess. Like, and, and you're right. They have totally different viewpoints. Like, like Lori is saying these people, these people, <clears throat> all these people are hurt. And Dr. Manhattan's like, we need to figure out what happened. And here's how I think I'm going to figure out what happened. And he's standing in like ground zero for, you know 
probably the worst cata- the worst single event catastrophe in the history Oof. of humanity, right? I mean, three. Right. You probably killed half the city, so three, three or four million people. Right. Which is like, that's a humongous scale. That's more people than died in any war, except probably one in World Wars one and two. Right. Or no, uh, or you know, in, in a single instance, by the way. Yeah. No, not in over one, a, over one a, minute, over a you know weeks or months time in a single instance. With no lead up. And and this is almost like a it's an echo for what everyone thought was gonna happen with the Russians. Because mm-hmm. everyone thought there was gonna be nuclear war and that nuclear war was gonna be a problem, obviously, because you can't right. have, you know, <clears throat> nuclear weapons, doesn't it? Um mm-hmm. and this is sort of like a minimal like a minimal, like mini version of that, right? Right. So instead of this wiping out the entire planet, we're just gonna take this tiny little part that's very visible mm-hmm. and hurt a lot of those people, but it'll save the greater good. It's this this very utilitarian philosophy mm-hmm. of Ozymandias. And mm-hmm. and this reaction here, you know, Dr. Manhattan's been losing his humanity throughout the entire, you know, novel. Right. He's been getting more and more distant from, you right. know, his previous self and his previous life. And, and here he's not even really registering mm-hmm. the, the people. The, he's talking about the source of the tachyons. He's not right. even... Doesn't no, he, even face. He's not. He's not really relating to the human, like you know, emotional impact to say the way Lori. I mean, it really is. The, Lori is here. Is is here pretty much to give you the human reaction. You know, if you're coming in at this from that that scale. You right. know, we already know how Doctor Manhattan is and how he, um, you know, processes uh, elements of you know humanity and everything. Because right at this point, he's not really you know in in touch with that. Lori uh-huh. is. So yeah. this is her reaction. And we wouldn't realize. I don't think if she was she wasn't there. Yes. I don't know that I would realize that he was doing this. Yeah, we are. Would, we we are. She is our way in. Like she is acting like I like you or I or anybody mm-hmm. that has the soul would react. Mm-hmm. If they are confronted with this, mm-hmm. and Doctor Manhattan is acting like Batman would act, <laughs> which is a Batman tendency of his <laughs> that he go. has. Yeah, there you go. He's focused on the mission. He's focused on the mission. <laughs> like just like a certain. Orphan, we all know. Him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, um, he doesn't. But he has to be reminded that she's upset. Like he's like, "Get me out of here! I want to be gone." He's like, well, "I'm sorry, I didn't realize this would be so bad." And he just they leave. Yeah, and this through, panel through, here through, through his excitement and everything, because we got to still. He's sort of even though it's it's carnage, mess, and everything. It's like you know, just crazy. You know, um, apocalyptic. You know, he's still excited because he's trying to figure everything out. He wants to figure everything out and Lee uh, and just try to go to like his stores. Well, like we said, you know, Lori is acting a different way until finally she says, "Get me out of here." Yeah, and 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 his it brings him back to okay. mm -hmm. Well, you know what? Oh wow, I didn't realize. (laughs) I'm concerned about you now. Like Mm -hmm. you matter to me, but no, these people don't matter to me. Right. So Mm -hmm. I will now do this because you matter to me. Right. Leave. And it's it's this uh, man, and that that when he teleports them away, right? Mm-hmm. What's left behind? The carnage, well, still. The, the carnage and that still the silhouettes. Yep. The silhouettes of the lovers burned into the wall that were actually there. Their, um, you know, their graffiti. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, one wonders, you know, I wonder how if that is a part of Veet's plan, which should, uh, you know. Uh, was he was he telling them to do this? Like, yeah, I'll just go paint these up here. I want to remind people about the, the you know, what'll happen if they uh, mm-hmm. resort to nuclear war. So they so um, basically, Doctor Manhattan says there's eight satellites doing this tachyon tr- production. There's eight regular tachyon producers on the planet, and then there's one really powerful source in Antarctica. Mm-hmm. And they, he's like, I'm just going to teleport there because that has to be what it is. Because it must be different. It's not just a natural phenomenon, right? Um, one other thing before we move down to the, to the Antarctic. Where we're gonna, where the climax of the action and uh, takes place. Uh, the panel three here on this page, where Doctor Manhattan's talking about, you know, how we're gonna figure out what's going on. We're gonna figure out what's going on. Laurie is, I think Laurie picks up a gun <laughs> from a from a police officer or somebody. Um, you see him there. I think that's a detective actually, right? He's breaking up the one of the guys breaking up the fight. Oh, oh, that's one of the dudes. Okay. That's one of those wow, uh, homicide detectives. I was oh, well. Now that you, now that you, mm, okay, we'll get into it. But yeah, the 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 um um page eight, you know, mm-hmm. the third panel actually focuses right on that gun. You're right. And then look, and look at the she, 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 look below. She bends down and picks it up. Hmm. She puts it in her purse. Mm-hmm. For some reason, I guess she has a purse. 
Anyway, <laughs> she picks up a bag. I did not. Hey, it's, it's stuff that you pick up each time yeah. that you look at this, and I it's always different. That. Yeah, right. It's always, always different. Something to pick up. Wow, incredible. So yeah. we cut back to the Antarctic, and and this is like the immediately proceeding scene from Veet saying, "I did it 35 minutes ago." Mm-hmm. Like we're picking up right from then, like with no no gap in time. Like right. This is a, like a flashback, mm-hmm. like almost like like Lori and um, and Doctor Manhattan was almost a flashback, right? Mm-hmm. So, so um, Rorschach is wants to to fight uh, wants to fight Adrian. <laughs> he says, "Take your cat away," because you know Bubastis is a you know, tiger, <laughs> probably hard to fight. Um, and what does he say? He says, "Listen, I, if I take the cat away, I'll just it's just saving you from beating humiliating me, humiliating you with another beating," mm-hmm. <laughs> which is just like it's really funny. It's, it's it's funny the way that Rorschach reacts to this because on one hand, you know, Dan is not believing anything. He just cannot believe anything that 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 you know, um, Vita's just saying that this moment is just preposterous to them. You know, Rorschach believes it. You know, Rorschach is saying that okay, is is you know he's not he's not bullshitting. You know, you know, listen to a voice, listen yeah. to his voice. He did it, but Rorschach wants to fight him. Like he wants to beat him up. At at this point, you know, the plan is done. You know, he's succeeded in his vi- quote unquote villainy, if you want to call it. But Rorschach still wants to fight him like a common thug. Yeah, he just wants to punch him. Using this trope that, okay, you know, you being a costume vigilante superhero, if you want to call it, you still want to take down a bad guy and, Mm -hmm. you know, turn him in. This, 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 um, this, this happening, this, this craziness that didn't happen and everything is so, you know, large scalable and everything that what the way that Rorschach is actually, um, thinking is just so small. And I right. think that's what um, um, Ozzy Mendez is trying to say. Like, you can do this, but why? Why? Like okay, <laughs> like he's like I can. I guess I can send her away if you want. <laughs> he's like I guess I can. I've already bested you, and I can. You know I'm gonna do it again. But I mean, all right. <laughs> like I can, but my my plan is done. Like yeah, you know, why do you want to continue? Like but but Rorschach, you know, just doesn't want to compromise his whole. You know, no. He's enraged. Yeah, he's enraged. He's, he's enraged. Um, he's he's he he already he he sees that you know that that the work has been done. Mm-hmm. And, but but and and also to go into the other you know flip side of that, Dan is still <laughs> he's still trying to talk. Um, um, um it can't be true. Says, it just can't be true. I mean, it, You're it, kidding. It, it, You're it'd be kidding. it'd be funny to see someone actually act this out. You know, well, I guess someone already actually already did. But they changed it. That. It's not. Nope. You're right. It would be neat to see someone act this out for a lot of reasons because there's OK, well, we'll we're going to do an we'll, episode we'll, on the movie. We'll, 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 get, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But um, yeah. but the incredulity, you know, incredulity, you know, how do you pronounce Incredu- you know, incredulity, 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 ah, man. I need something to drink. Anyway. I mispronounce stuff on this cast all the time, and like I listen to, like I'll, I know, like I listen to this podcast, guys. Like I, I know, like someone's got to, uh, and you guys won't. So I will, uh, but and I listen to podcasts. I hear myself just say weird stuff all the time, man. And, so don't worry about it. Hashtag hate Sam. Hashtag hate my mouth. There we go. But right. um, yeah, he's 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 in um, you know, he just not just not believe anything that that Ozzy is saying. So I love this. I love this. <laughs> <sighs> Very well. Mm-hmm. Once more, I engineered a monster, cloned his brain from a human psychic, sent it to New York, and killed half the city. <laughs> that's what he says at the top. That's really like they explain. That's the whole plot. He explains it right there, right? Yeah, I mean, right he's just like, oh man, uh, it, I, I've, I've, expl- I've explained, I, ex- I explained this in long form. So let me just give you the short form of this, right? <laughs> you know, and then um, he say, no, this, this, this is, that's just impossible. So that you're in your assassination. So what if the um the your, your plan to you know assassination attempt? What if the guy actually first um tried to shoot you instead of your, t- your secretary? And Ozzy just you know turns around and like, well, I mean, that means I would have just had to catch a bullet, right? He says you couldn't do that. No, I love that what? that panel, that look he gives him. <laughs> Or he's just like, I just told you what I did. Mm-hmm. He's like, I just beat Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> like, what do you think? You know what I mean? Look at that Is face. it that impossible, Dan? Mm. Mm. Uh, you, we're, we're, still, we're still dealing with characters who, even though they have the existence of Dr. Manhattan, they're mm-hmm. still dealing with things that just are beyond their imaginations, really. Right. When right. Um, um, the only reason why you even believe any of this exists is because Dr. Manhattan exists. Right. Know? Um, so 
in, in teleporting in, aliens right like all that is only possible because you live in a world where a man can mm-hmm. teleport the entire city's worth of protesters home with a snap of his fingers pretty much so um dan's continued um you know just just trying to just piece everything together and just trying to just figure out okay Wow, I, I just cannot believe this is happening. I mean, it really mm-hmm. shouldn't be too far off from him that this could actually happen. But, you know, eventually he comes around. It's like Ozymandias never would have been capable of doing any of these things without the technology that Dr. Manhattan brought. Yes. The teleportation, mm-hmm. the tachyon research, the energy, mm-hmm. all of that. This, this could only happen in a universe where Dr. Manhattan made these scientific advances possible. Mm-hmm. It's not possible here. It's not possible in a lot of other universes because there's no godlike power in those right. universes. There, right. there, there isn't. Right. So, so Dr. Manhattan is, is able to really like, uh, you know, he's, he's the, initiating condition to all this catalyst the catalyst right he's this he's a necessary condition for all this to happen so you know it is a superhero story right as much as as much as it's billed as a you know mass adventurers and they try not to say the word superhero mm-hmm. they try not to talk about powers and things like that right you don't mm-hmm. see that word right. or that term being used here right it's a superhero story because the initiating this the like you said, the catalyst for all this is Dr. Manhattan and everything he's done to change the timeline. Mm-hmm. In fact, in fact, the other things that changed the timeline had negligible impact on the timeline. Right. Negligible. Like almost identical, 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 identical. And then all of a sudden, Dr. Manhattan's here and you see the history of the rest of the, the rest of the history of this, of this just mm-hmm. change drastically. Yep. Drastically. And that's after his activity, you know. Yep. And, Vietnam. And, and, and- and um, Ozzy's um, amazing brain, him being mm-hmm. the smartest man in the world, you know, which is sort of like another Batman tendency. He tends to be yes. another, you know, the, uh, the the smartest, you know, superhero and everything. But mm-hmm. he um, trope. <laughs> yes. So he figures out because of um, the the psychic. He says the psychic was mm-hmm. the key. You know. Yes. Um, and that's when he's begin to start, you know, hatching his whole plan and figuring out that this whole thing is possible. You know. So. The, yeah, so so this whole page, this page ten, is yeah. his whole explanation of everything that happened. Mm-hmm. It's definitely something to read it like three or four times, so you get it. But effectively, he cloned a psychic's a dead psychic's brain, <clears throat> then had it sent, set it right rigged so when it died, right, like it's a semi sentient brain. When it died, it would send a psychic pulse mm-hmm. everywhere, mm-hmm. and that pulse was going to be full of terrifying information about a separate dimension. Mm. That's occupied by uh, you know aliens who are going to come and invade the world, right? Mm-hmm. That's essentially it. And when the thing got teleported, it died. And when it died, it sent out that shockwave. And it's sort of like a. It's described later in one of the bubbles uh, on the TV as like a stinging bee. Like not a lot of intelligence. It just punched out. Right. And that punch is what what everybody's experiencing. And you know everybody sees these terrible images because there was terrible information coded in that pulk. It'll make people go insane. Sensitive psychic people will be having bad dreams for he says years. But this this alien race is going to be, you know, a threat to humanity and is going to immediately be an other. Right. And what he has done here is he's solved the psychological problem um, that we have as a species, which is that we always label things as us and them. Yes. It's it's probably an evolutionary response. You know what I mean? Probably was useful at the point in time when we were, you know barely you know intelligent right like you know 100 200,000 years ago or whatever yeah i mean you know but it's hardwired into us it's weird it's it's, 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 it's a survival it's a survival instinct because um i mean i'm i'm not in the um you know mind of a animal or a bear or you know tiger or i have you know, the lion. mind of a tiger <laughs> i have a tiger mind myself while they had the that's pure why i inst- like fish so much i eat a lot of fish. i know right, you there you fish. go yeah so while they had the pure instinct of survival, I guess we as humans, we have, as we develop over, you know, um, 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 centuries or, you know, um, millennia and everything, uh, we have the unfortunate ability to actually be able to think and contemplate and, you mm-hmm. know, analyze and, you know, develop and stuff. So, you can realize but, that this instinct doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but, right? but combine that with the survival instinct, it yeah. ends up being really, um, you know, a crutch. 
to a point, I guess. You I know. think what it what 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 it, mm-hmm. it's just it's just a need to feel it's a need to know who us is. I think more mm-hmm. than a need to know who them is, right? Right. Because yes. great, because you can point. see because mm-hmm. you can see. I think you know uh, you can see as people you know people want just want to feel comfortable like that. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think that I think that's what that's what I think Ozymandias has tapped into here, right? Because. Mm-hmm. What he recognizes is that without a them, there can't be an us, mm-hmm. and that if you don't give a bigger thing to oppose, humanity can't unite because we'll have to find we have to know who us is. So that means there has to be a them. It's okay, but the aliens are separate and outside of us, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The aliens are inherently a them, right? So humanity can unite because we know us is the entire planet. And now mm-hmm. there's a reason to unite because there is a threat. In in theory, yes. In theory, right? Mm-hmm. Be, and, th- and in a way that so many people will experience so viscerally mm-hmm. and so sensually with their senses mm-hmm. that, you know, I, I mean, how can you convince someone that this something like this would be fake? I right. mean, how, like, how many, like, think about this for a second. Living mm-hmm. in the universe we live in, in the year we live in, mm-hmm. in the country we live in. Mm-hmm. This is a, you know, try convincing somebody that this thing, which would have had real, again, very mm-hmm. real sensory, right. you know, responses made you right. feel things sick and see things and, and in your brain and in your head. How would you parse that from being real or fake? How would you know how to make a dif- differentiation? You wouldn't. Right. There'd be no way for you to tell. And this is Cartesian. It's, uh, mm-hmm. this is, uh, to get into my old philosophy, this is a, a philosopher named Descartes. He's the one mm-hmm. who said, uh, cogito mm-hmm. ergo sum, or I think therefore I am, right? But he right. says that there's no way for you to differentiate between sensory perception, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're going to have a hard time, I think, convincing people this is fake. Well, it's so, my, oh, it's oh, what I would say, right? I think you, this is like so so locked in because everybody everybody's going to believe it's real. And if you did testimony in a court, I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> how many people would have to come in and tell you I saw this, right? Well, huh. it's, it's funny that we're talking about this because we're in an age of deep fakes. <laughs> You know, where oh, yeah, right. is back in the eighties, um, you saw something on TV, you believed it. You oh know? yeah, for sure. You 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 ever since the dawn of television and everything, you believe what you saw on TV. You mm-hmm. know, if it's on TV, it actually exists and everything. So this sort of touches into the point of um what you were talking about before. You know, sensitives uh, around the world um will have you know bad dreams for years to come. It says in a particular panel, mm-hmm. and many will be driven by shock. You know, for um, you know, um, um, sudden floods, uh, um, grotesque sensation, and everything. So right. people would be driven mad um, by this. You know, it would be a certain element of people. That's, I guess, that's what makes you know human beings just so unique from animals and everything. Uh-huh. Um, they see something, and because they have the unfortunate um, 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 means of processing it in their mind. It was. It's going to be var- uh, varied reactions to this upon seeing it. So you see mm-hmm. an alien, you know, uh, all of a sudden you see an alien, you know, not to mention that, you know, Dr. Manhattan exists already and everything. So something just extraordinary is already possible. Now you actually see an alien and actually all these, you know, uh, the, the destruction of, you know, three million people, the um, killing of three million people um, because of this so-called invasion of what they're labeling, it, you know, labeling it as. They don't know exactly what this is, but we come to the realization that because we're human beings, we have to put a reason. We have to put um, 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 an excuse behind why this actually happened. So as we go across, um, we'll, we'll get into this, you know, when the pages, you know, come out and everything, mm-hmm. um, um, the different news reports actually come to the conclusion that this is an alien invasion. You know, this is, this is in many ways, this creating of another mm-hmm. is, is Ozymandias is cutting of the Gordian knot. Mm-hmm. And that's something that is very obvious later in the panel you're referring to, I think, when he yells, I did it, in a couple well, well, pages. Well, I, I, well, well, let's get to it. So, um, Okay, so we'll, we'll come back to some of this intermediary <laughs> stuff because there's really interesting stuff. But basically, mm-hmm. Ozymandias, you know, screams, I did it. And he's standing, he's, he's in a spotlight in this mm-hmm. panel. It's on the bottom of page 19, mm-hmm. the triple panel. He yells, I did it. And he's exultant and he's standing in, you know, in front of this painting he has of Alexander the Great cleaving the Gordian knot with a sword. Mm-hmm. And he's spotlit. He's this is his triumphant moment. And the Gordian knot is an allegory. I know I mentioned this earlier in the, mm-hmm. in the show. 
Mm-hmm. But it's an allegory, essentially, and it means uh, it's about thinking in the third dimension or lateral yes. thinking, right? right. Mm-hmm. Because uh, military geniuses like Alexander the Great, are they're, they can see an extra dimension beyond what you or I can see, which is right. if you or I were commanding troops and we would put them, you know, we'd array them the best way and we'd look at this. But Alexander the Great would say, that river is the thing. And he'd say, mm-hmm. I can use this to create a weak point and I can see in the third dimension. So if I move my, like in... Um, there's this battle where he just sent his cavalry off to the right. They just mm-hmm. sent it go, like just set it going. Uh-huh. And the Persians extended their lines because they had more people, and they extended, 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 extended until they created a weak point in the middle. And then he veered back into the middle, right, and went right for the the Persian emperor. Right. I'm saying this all because he saw something no one else could see, which is that you know his numbers were in a disadvantage, and the only thing that mattered was his ability to strike at the head. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, Ozymandias is doing that because instead of doing things the hard way Mm -hmm. and going in and getting the Russians and the Americans to agree and having Dr. Manhattan come in and, you know, sit over the top of this and impose this, you know, order and make them, make them come to the table so they don't have warfare and getting involved himself. Right. Right. He just cleaves the knot and ends Mm -hmm. the tension. He cuts the tension. You know how they say you can cut tension with a knife, right? Yep. He cuts it. And he says, now all of a sudden, we got to work together in a Star Trek type of way. (laughs) That's the the Star Trek method. Um, Ozzy Ozzy, Ozzy had to make a decision at that point. So this is the the decision that he had to make and, you know, do it through his years of planning. You know, Mm -hmm. he cared about the world so much. He cared about humanity so much that he was willing to sacrifice three million people in the in the, in the hopes that humanity will come together to, three million um, other people other people yes other people <laughs> three million not me no because i'm too important i'm um, yeah yeah these other people you, though you, 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 you have think, them. And, and it really goes to show his whole hubris that he's so mm-hmm. much of a god and yep. it's the smartest person that okay he's going to choose who lives and who dies and everything yep. for the sake of, you know, humanity and everything. But let's back up a little bit because okay. we, we actually skipped over. Um, we um, did because I just wanted to talk about oh, that. Yeah, yeah. I, I just got so excited about the Gordian knot. Yes. <laughs> I yes. hear, I, you know, anytime I see an Alexander the Great reference, and, I just and, get like, and, and we will get right back to it as well. Um, yeah. Because um, Dr. Manhattan and Lori has just arrived. And well, right now, before that, right before that, he does something. Ozymandias does something that you wouldn't expect here. Okay, what does he do? He just says, My servant's death from exposure after drunkenly opening my vivarium provides its silent capstone, which is a lie. He lies about murdering his, his, his assistants. <laughs> he commits th- three million murders, which is like. A uh-huh. Stalin and Hitler level of murders. Right. This is more, that's more than Pol Pot. Right. I mean, more mm-hmm. than Pol Pot. Mm-hmm. That's, that's more than the Armenian genocide. These, these events that are rightly mm-hmm. important and taught, and, and you know, mm-hmm. it's more than that. And he says, well, my servant's deaths, you know, from drunkenly opening, you know, he killed him. So he can't, he, he is like, I think that he can see, mm-hmm. you know, he can see the flaw in his argument, right? Which is, like I said, three million other people have to die. Right. That's the flaw. That's that's what makes him so. That's what really makes him such a selfish villain. This is not right. a sacrifice. He uh-huh. talks about sacrifice later. Uh-huh. That's not what this is. Mm-hmm. This is a plot. This is a plot. This is this is the the. the if you were talking about the ultimate trope of a villain, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, of what we call quote unquote villainy, Ozymandias is the biggest villain of this this story. But is he? I mean, that's, if he, that's, if that's, he, that's that's why I said quote unquote villain. Watchmen is interesting. What's what I love so much about this is mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of philosophical arguments about ethics that this kind of mm-hmm. it's like an extreme example of mm-hmm. the um, the trolley car mm-hmm. experiment. Do you know what that is? Uh, refresh. Okay, so a trolley car experiment is this. You've got, you are standing next to a switch. And uh-huh. You can throw the switch on a track and change a track if you want to. You have the mm-hmm. choice to do that or not. Okay. okay. A trolley is coming down the hill. I'm guessing we're in San Francisco, which is probably where they were when they, they did this the first time. We don't have trolleys where I live. Right. So the trolley is coming down the hill. No brakes. Mm-hmm. Can't stop. Mm-hmm. There is a baby in a stroller on one track. Mm-hmm. Okay. But if you switch the, and, Okay, I'm sorry. Let me back up. So this trolley's coming down the tracks. It's going to crash and kill everybody on the trolley. There's 10 people on the trolley. Okay. You can throw a switch, Mm -hmm. and the trolley won't crash, saving those 10 people, but you'll kill a baby in a cart. Okay. The question is, do you throw the switch? 
Yeah, and it's a way to thing. illustrate how different philosophical um, like philosophies would view that sort of action, right? What would they do? And then how right. would they reason that out, right? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. Ozymandias is a utilitarian, so he says 10 people are more important than one he throws a switch. Right. So there you go. That, that's the difference. Now, Rorschach would never throw the switch. He would try to, he would try to get, you know, in the way of the, he'd probably try to you know, push the baby out of the way or, you know, try to get the people off. Like he would probably jump on the train, jump on the trolley and get killed. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's just a, it's just a way to illustrate, you know, yeah, how yeah. you view yeah. those different it's, it's, sort of it, You know, pieces. are you viewing, um, um, it's a, a, a hard decision to make and it's really no good decision. It's the, you know, do you save the baby or do you save, you know, everyone else and everything? Mm-hmm. So, um, and we'll do, we'll do more. We'll do maybe a recap later because we're going to do another full overarching podcast, maybe about the overall story because mm-hmm. there's a lot of echoes to earlier things that have happened here. Right. Where, where you can see like, uh, you know, his rationalization of other, of other murders. You can kind of see where he's lied before too. You, now that we mm-hmm. know what he's actually done, you can see where <laughs> right, he's, right, right. where he's lied. And it's interesting to see when he's lied, right? That's something we'll, we'll probably look at. The um, funny thing about um, what you said, you know, him talking about he's lying about, you know, his service and everything. And then Dan talks about, well, what about us? You know, and um, he's he's trying he's contemplating on, well, what about them now that they know the knowledge of his plan and everything? What right. does he do um, far beyond? You know, the Ozymandy still had deep history with these with these particular minute, you know, costume heroes and everything, mm-hmm. you know, and well, so. So he definitely lied because he's thinking about murdering them, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that may that answers my question for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's thinking, but, I'm but, murder but he's guys. interrupted by um, um, the doc and um, Lori, you know, yes. appearing and everything. So uh, we never really get an answer to that question. Mm-hmm. We don't because they get caught, they get interrupted by mm-hmm. uh, Doctor Manhattan showing up, and he knows. This is where this is. He says basically this is where it's coming from. Lori knows where they are. They're an aunt Karnak. And he says, "Did Adrian plan this?" And then there's these weird, these weird panels here. Which, mm-hmm. if you flip forward like to the next page, you can see him. He's acting as he's in the same position, doing the same thing. So he's experiencing time as like a loop here, a little closed yeah. loop. Right. So he's talking to Lori ninety seconds ago. He's coming in. He's following Adrian. So the tachyons are causing him problems at his perception of time. Right. Right. They're muddying all the water. So this whole like. What probably is happening is this whole like uh, little smash time here when he's down here in the article probably feels like one instant, right? Right. Just him. experiencing yes. it all at once mm-hmm. because the tachyons mess with his perception, and, and then he teleports inside and leaves Lori outside. Right, right. Lori is just like, "What the hell? Come on now, you know, don't and do the, this to me, John." <laughs> and then we <laughs> don't, see. Don't start weirding on. Don't start weirding weirding on me now. You know, again. Exactly. And then we see the same loop, right? Mm-hmm. John, same behavioral loop where he says the same things, and except we see the other half of the context, right? This is brilliant storytelling at its really finest, guys. You know, <sighs> if, you're, if you're in the comic books, you've never seen this, this, this type of storytelling at this point, so proceed. <laughs> he says, I better follow him inside. He says it again, right? I better mm-hmm. follow him inside. And you think he's talking about teleporting in, but he's really talking about following Adrian into his secret lair room, right? Right. Uh, you know, uh, we see Laurie's making her way inside, and Doctor Manhattan is stalking Adrian. He's like, if he's beat, he's like, I can't turn the whole place into glass. This is, he's like, this is impossible. You're being stupid. Mm-hmm. And then, recording? yes, I'm recording. Sorry. So, so they go in. There's an intrinsic field generator, mm-hmm. and we can see Adrian at the controls, and. Bubastis lures Dr. Manhattan into the field generator and he presses the button and and tries to eliminate Dr. Manhattan's intrinsic field Mm -hmm. and it vaporizes him Mm -hmm. right away. And he makes a comment that um, he didn't really know if that was going to (laughs) work. Yeah, he's like, oh, all right, good. He's like pleasantly surprised, like, oh, great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that all worked right. out. Well, you know. I wasn't really thinking it was going <laughs> to... And then he turns around. He's mm-hmm. like, oh, I wasn't really expecting... And then uh, Laurie shoots him. <laughs> There's the gun. Right. You know, that we we seen Laurie look at, you know, in the um in the first, you know, few panels when mm-hmm. um when, when her and Doc um, entered you know, Manhattan and everything. Here's the gun that she had hidden in her purse that she took yeah. from the police. You know? Yep. So, so... I guess it brings me to a question. Why did she feel that she needed to take the gun? I don't know. I don't I think I I I I want to say it's cuz of who, who her dad is. Hmm. 
It's because she's she's not just the Silk Spectre. Okay. She's also the daughter of the comedian. I guess that's a theory, but and if if you're coming into well, I. I I can't imagine or fathom, you know, how my reaction would be. But you're, I, I would imagine you're you're coming into that situation. You're seeing all that death and destruction and everything, and you're you see the uh, a gun. Maybe maybe she's thinking, okay, maybe I might need this later. You know, right? Um, just because you never know. I, I see it, you just you just never know. So I'll go ahead know. and grab it because it's dangerous stuff going on. I'll just grab it. So I guess if you want to have a why, because they really don't answer it here, even though it's a really great way. As far as a, 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 a foreshadowing that that um, that the gun is going to be used, it's it's another trope too. Is that if you introduce, it's the thing that they they say in television. If you if you introduce a gun into a scene mm-hmm. um, in the first act, it has to be used at some point in the story by the yep. time the third act comes. Yes. So they introduce the um, the visualization of the gun not um, in this particular chapter. So mm-hmm. at some point it's going to have to be used, and here you know here's where they present it. Absolutely. So and she also shoots. they 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 also foreshadow um in the in the previous panel about uh, V being able to catch a bullet. Yep. Yep. He says he says that that where he, that look man that looks great. So yeah. she shoots him and he catches the bullet right. Mm-hmm. And then he kicks her in the stomach. And says, I didn't think that would work either. <laughs> He's like, this is the one that I didn't think this was going to work. And then uh, tells Dan to grow up. And Dan's like, if you hurt her, I swear to God. It's like, ah, who cares? You know what? As I'm really thinking about this, um, to her for her to really grab that gun in Manhattan doesn't really make any sense. Um, I, I'm just theorizing that they probably had to have a reason as to why um, um, V catches a bullet. So if he makes a comment about um, you know, to, to Dan about, well, that means, um, if I'm, if you're trying to deduce the fact of that assassin and, uh, well, maybe I, you know, I would have had to catch the bullet. Um, at this point it's like, well, how can, you know, Ozzy catch a bullet and everything, you know, right. how is that even possible? So they had to put in at some point a reason as to why that would happen to, in order to, I... for, to make his whole story make sense about him catching a bullet. Right? I think she, I think she like, honestly, man, I, I think she picks up the gun because she wants, like she's, she's mad. Okay. And he's saying, I'm going to go find the source of this. I'm going to go okay. find the source of this. And she's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to bring a gun when we find out what, what did this. I, right? I'm, I'm just saying, okay, it's a theory, you know, um, mm-hmm. you have your theory. I have mine and everything. It's just, uh, it, to me, the reason, um, I mean the extranger reason way it, it was a, um, a, a a plot element to fix because mm-hmm. they they got they they wrote them you know Alan Moore wrote himself into a corner not to say that this actually happened because I don't know it could be exactly what what um, Scott said but they wrote themselves into a situation where they had to find a reason in order to introduce that gun mm-hmm. so it, it may, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just talking it out you know <laughs> I mean it could be a lot of reasons why yeah. she picks it I think I think I think you could be right for sure for sure. But then, nevertheless, you know, she calls him an asshole, shoots him. Yeah, he, shoots um, him. <laughs> he, um, 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 there is blood, so it looks like he might, you know, actually be dead, but... Nope, caught the bullet. Kicks her in the stomach. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right yeah. in the stomach, just boof. Mm-hmm. And then uh, doubles her over and then says, what, what would you have achieved if you just stopped me? Failing to prevent Earth's salvation is your only triumph. And yet that failure overshadows everything else. He's giving this big, long victory speech, right? Oh, man. Like, Dazzling like classic, the humanity like will reject the Billy darkness Wood. at its heart. <laughs> and then Dr. Manhattan is like uh, like, uh, like 300 feet tall and punches through the, <laughs> punches through the wall and says, I'm like, very disappointed. He's like, you idiot. Really? You think it was going to kill me? Come on now. He says, it didn't kill Osterman. Did you really think it would kill me? Like, he's totally disconnected from who he is, right? He's not human anymore. He's only Dr. Manhattan. But but yet and still he's ha- he's feeling like emotion like okay you you irritated you sort of pissed me off at this point so mm-hmm. now I'm gonna do something to you 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 try to destroy me so my my instinct of having to survive or actually get revenge at this point because of what you tried to do I'm gonna try to do something to you and that's what these next few panels look like that's attempting to happen until Ozzy gets this remote 
and um you know doc asked uh well what's that in your hand v you know another ultimate weapon you know um is is that how you're gonna try to you know uh destroy me or what have you but no it's remote and he turns on all the tvs yep and they can see that he was right they're gonna immediately immediately this action has halted the conflict because Mm -hmm. now they're coming together the russians and the americans are coming together in a spirit of harmony to fight the alien menace so 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 as you as you go through these th- um you know speech um news bubbles and everything and you read in each one you know mm-hmm. it's different things that um that happen throughout the world like you know one saying you know people are going insane a pregnant woman com- is convinced her unborn child was trying to eating you know <sighs> is eating her and then terminates her you know and before it and say it terminates her pregnancy it you know just cuts off and then it's just different comments on different news organizations commenting on this 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 what what has happened so at first they don't know what what happened then eventually as the panels go by they deduce in their head that this is an alien invasion so they sort of in their minds create what they believe has happened so it, it, it's it's just funny to me that this is what they come to you know an alien invasion because they their their minds cannot believe just cannot believe what has happened and this is what they come to the decision that they're the news organizations are coming to you know yep. that this is an alien invasion and then we see a um tear running down you know ozzy's eyes and you know he's you know shouting in victory i did it <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he's crying I've, so beautiful I've, I've, what I've he's united done. humanity you know yeah so they all kind of are adventurers come to terms that Adrian's right. Mm-hmm. I can't expose him because it will make world war much more likely. It will undo everything. It will just like, okay, well, everybody, it, everything will just pretty much go back and it'll probably escalate and speed up the tensions even more to, you know, the nuclear destruction probably happen the next day if they revealed his plan. So to bring this into the language of the trolley experiment, Mm. What Adrian is saying is, I threw the switch, I killed the baby. Mm-hmm. Further down the line, you can tell on me, but if you do, you'll be throwing a switch that will then careen the trolley off the cliff. Mm. So mm-hmm. I made the moral decision for you to throw the first switch. If you make the second moral decision, you'll be culpable for everything that happens after that. So... Going back to the unanswered question about, um, well, um, Dan asked, well, what about us? You know, and he's trying to decide, well, what do I do with them? This actually puts them in a conundrum, like you said, and Mm. he doesn't really have to kill them because they make the decision. They they they're put into a situation where, you know, they just have to keep the secret. So. Well, I, I think it's fairly plain that Doctor Manhattan means to not allow him to kill Lord <laughs> to kill these people, right? Right. Like Doctor yeah. Manhattan is yeah. disappointed. He he does yeah. not. He's not coming down here to let Adrian mm-hmm. murder Lori for certain. Right. Um. So I, I think that Doctor Manhattan's arrival kind of takes his ability to kill these people right off yeah. the table. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Right. <laughs> so, so you know. Uh, like Lori comes to terms with it. It's like, oh man, we got to do it. Doctor Manhattan comes to terms with it. Dan comes to terms with it. Rorschach says, "No way, not he's like, never." He's, he's like joking, of course. You know, <laughs> what are you talking about? We have to compromise. Like, nope, not in the face of Armageddon. Not in the face of Armageddon. Never compromise. That's on a T-shirt, guys. Huh? Yeah. Never ever compromise. Not even never in the compromise. Face of Woo. Hey. That's deepness. That's deepness at its finest. Mm-hmm. Never, ever mm-hmm. compromise, guys. Not even in the face of Armageddon. You know? He's willing to cause Armageddon because the truth is more important than the utility of the future. It shows, it, 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 it goes on a trope of what, um, I, I, the commentary that Alan Moore was making on superheroes that essentially... They're, they're, you know, the Superman thing of truth, justice, and the, well, the American way or what have you. <laughs> yeah. The truth, justice, you know, is, 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 um, takes precedence over anything, you yeah. know. And this is represented right here in Rorschach, you know. Superman, what would Superman do in this situation? You right. know, it, uh, you know, you know, he, he's truth, you know, what, what his, his whole moral center 
is to tell the truth and, you know, bring, you know, criminals to justice. Superman is, isn't equipped to deal with this. No, not at all. He doesn't not have the, he doesn't have, like... Was Superman compromised? That's the question. Was I Superman, think... in this instance, compromise his, his ideal, his morals and everything to let this plan go through? Hmm. Or to, no. to, to, to not be known, I should say. You know, Rorschach is a, um, um, is a, is a, a tr is a trope embodiment of that question is, is what I believe that Alan Moore was trying to, you know, talk about, um, as far as our, our commentary on like superheroes, they, mm -hmm. they, 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 we, we, um, they had these adventures that they go through and, but yet, and still they come to these decisions on their own, um, and, and use that to, you know, justify things that they do as far as like, you know, truth and everything. And so, Ozymandias is, is putting a mirror to them. This is what happened um, in the greater good. Are you really going to let this happen? It's a, it's a question of ethics. And what yes. Rorschach is saying is, you know, for him, the mm -hmm. question is, can I take an, can an immoral action mm -hmm. be moral? Yes. And to Rorschach, the answer is no. It cannot be moral. So we mm -hmm. do not compromise. We do not lie. You know what I mean? We don't change the truth even if it would be helpful for people because the mm -hmm. truth is a thing that is of such value that it cannot be compromised so, so in this in, in this world is rorschach the ultimate quote-unquote good guy because he's the only one that's seeing is it would you consider would you relate good and truth in the same <laughs> in, in the and so 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 we i guess you know in in superhero comics and everything we we associate good and truth as the same thing right right is the commentary in this Watchmen is good and truth um, one and the same? Is it balancing each other, or is it just opposite ends of of the spectrum? I I, th I think it's meant to it's meant to ask, you're meant to ask that question. Mm -hmm. Is you know, <clears throat> and the question is, can you can good come from evil? Mm -hmm. Really, that's the question here because mm -hmm. the idea is, I think Rorschach would say is that you cannot plant a good tree with a poison seed, right? right? You can't start off with analogy. an evil lie and build mm -hmm. truth on that foundation because they're incompatible. Mm -hmm. um, he believes that under no, this cannot be possible because, um, well, the, the reasoning is that because it is truth and truth, what is truth mm -hmm. is good. Mm -hmm. Because what is, is good because creation is good or because the universe is all inherently a positive mm -hmm. thing. Right. right. So you should not do an you cannot do an immoral action mm -hmm. because if you do an immoral action, all the actions that subsequently are immoral. It's like well, a, it's, it's like it's, adding it's, a negative to a math problem, right? Well, it was like laying a bad foundation. You yeah. know, you you, yeah. you it's it's temporary there and it may serve the moment and everything, but the, um, you know, eventually at some point it's going to break down because it was eventually built off a bad foundation. And then I think, you know, throughout history, you know, in wars and, you know, conquests and everything, um, big lies have been built mm -hmm. off, you know, or you know, civilizations have been built off big lies, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Like we found America empty. There's mm -hmm. one. There's one for you that makes up that should make everybody that's listening to this pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> you know, off, I mean, off, off the backs of slaves, too. You know, mm -hmm, so I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it was built on a, a, a shaky foundation. So, I mean, I. I live in America and, you know, um, I hope to live a long, good life. You know, we all have a finite, you know, um, into our, you know, existence and everything. But but we confront um, those truths on a regular basis. We, like we, we, sure we acknowledge them mm -hmm. and we say they're real. We don't. It'd be totally different if, mm -hmm. let's say, let's say we the history books were all amended and we they never mentioned what slavery was. Like it just ne we just it just never mentioned it. Didn't come up. No, it never showed up. There, there, there are certain books of all that have amended history. <laughs> well, yes. Okay. So, look, listen. There are certain places you can go and find these books. They're being taught in public schools. Uh, right? There's a these, certain big book that, you know, um, okay. What is it? We, there we, was one in Texas where they, they changed <laughs> the word slaves to laborers or something. They imported la they imported laborers, right? It was something mm. like that. It's, uh, ugh, mm -hmm. ooh, man. Dang. Well, it's, so, it's, the it's, question is, can you – obviously, mm -hmm. I think you can overcome morally flawed actions by – by evaluating and moving on from them and changing your behavior, right? That's right, the right. what you want to do as a, right. as a society. But Ozymandias mm -hmm. is removing from people the the way to make a moral choice. There is no mm -hmm. moral choice to make. He has made right. the moral choice for us, and that he, is that we need to be taught a lesson, and we need to learn that lesson now, or we cannot continue as a species. Right. 
Yeah, and um, he's talking about what's next. What's next? So, you know, he's he's about to build his utopia. You know, I'm going to build a utopia now. You know, the 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 letters um that we've seen fall, you know, that fallen <laughs> right at the um beginning of the chapter. You know, with the um you know right back in Manhattan, he's building this. You know, he's he's thinking about the the next step in building this utopia. Right. So he's talking about his next. Yeah, you're right. He's moving on. He's like, OK, so now we have to build the utopia. We've already got the initiating action. I wonder what we should do next. Then he makes a Rorschach joke, which is really high handed. He says Rorschach's not a reliable witness and he's not going to make it anyway. Right. So he goes <laughs> the unreliable witness. <laughs> but look at that face he's making up here when he makes that joke about blotting everything out. Right. I think I think he knows what's about to happen. And you can see that John teleports out uh, to the outside here at the mm-hmm. bottom of page 20, right? Mm-hmm. You see that flash there behind them? The green flash, then blue flash on those two panels. So John's teleported out. And then Ozymandias makes a joke and says, oh, I wonder what will happen next, because he can see that he's gone to leaves. He notices. <laughs> he's like, I bet right. I know what's going to happen. Right. So Lori and John are looking for a place to hang out, and they want to you know, they want to make love. to Lor- so, Lori and Dan. Lori and Dan, right. Sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they want to make love. They want. Lori wants to feel alive. And what's that smell? And they set this joke up from the first panel of the whole thing. Nostalgia. It's the smell of nostalgia, which is the scent from Veet. Look how far Lori has come from the beginning of, you know, this this whole story and everything. Mm-hmm. You know, she's grown so much as a character, you know, from a non-believer to like, you know, to a believer at this point where she she was pretty much dead as far as emotion. You know, her cynicism was just up there. You know, she she was um, she didn't want to be a costume hero and everything, you know, mm-hmm. was forced into it, which was she believes um, by her mom and everything. And um, this was just her her way. But now she's at a point where everything has happened so much. She's just feeling overcome with emotion that she just wants to be comforted by Dan. She wants you know, she wants to feel alive at this point. She's no longer cynical mm-hmm. because she's seen the ultimate, you know, <laughs> you, 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 she she and she she you you you're even um you know um I'm concerned about her her wherewithal to even contemplate and you know feel anything at all because of what she just said. She wants to be comforted by Dan because this is her link, her last well, one of her last links to to humanity. You know, well, it's not point. just that she's making a choice. Mm-hmm. She's choosing something, and I think for Lori, her whole life, like you said, she doesn't feel like she has a lot of agency. She's yes, pushed into yes, superhero yes, because this is yes, a family business, yes, and she doesn't want to do right. these things. And then mm-hmm. she meets Doctor Manhattan, and you know, mm-hmm. what can you do? This is like, what man are you going to be with after Doctor Manhattan? Right. And then she feels then she feels like she's getting kind of shuffled along and shuffled mm-hmm. along and shuffled mm-hmm. along and shuffled along, and now mm-hmm. she's saying, "No, I want to choose to feel alive with yes. you." Right. Another mortal person. Right. And now she has agency. Now she can do things, right? Yep. She's learned that she does have agency, and she's not just through this pathway. She's not just being pushed along. She knows – I think finding out who her father is makes a big difference there because she knows that, that he had agency, right? Yeah. Say yeah, what he, you want about the comedian. Right. He yeah, made he some chose, choices. He chose – yep. Mm-hmm. So, see, she, she is her father. You know, she, she becomes – well, she doesn't become her father, but she... Because she certainly of, incorporates more of who he is into who she sees of herself. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, you know, being alone in life. I mean, they, they say you don't really know who you are until, you know, it's all about before before you end. And some mm-hmm. that are lucky to find themselves um, early on in life are, you know, the lucky ones. Right. You know, others are pretty much just searching and then they don't really find out um, until it's too late, you know, quote unquote. But Lori... You know, she finds out, you know, she finds out she finds out herself through, you know, her father, like you said, and is actually gaining, you know, the agency back, like you said, you know, through her choosing of Dan. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. We see they're silhouetted, Mm -hmm. the light from the pool silhouetting them, just like all the a call back to all the other times we've seen the silhouettes of the lovers. Including including Dan's dream, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. With the uh, with his villainess that he obsessed over. And mm-hmm. remember, Dan is a fetishist. He loves this superhero stuff. So this is going to be, <laughs> you know, making love with the Silk Spectre in the fortress of the villain Ozymandias in Antarctica, mm-hmm. in his richly appointed swimming pool room that has completely decked out in Egyptian decor. Right. Probably going to be high on his list of yeses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a I lot mean, of yeses you know, for Dan hey, Dryberg on that This is his ultimate right? dream here. You know, absolutely. I mean, 
so the um so we got the silhouette and then um and just imagine this if this was a show and it, then it fades into Rorschach's face with the same Rorschach silhouette of um oh not silhouette but uh mm -hmm. the Rorschach mask of two beings being enjoined to each other. Yep. You know yep. that's what this you know, page page twenty three top panel is. It goes yep. into that and Rorschach is making his way out. And then John uh, Doctor Manhattan teleports in, stepping on the butterfly. Mm -hmm. Which is so, uh, you know, obviously an allusion to something that's about to happen here. He says, what are you doing, Rorschach? Rorschach says, I'm going back to America. I'm going to tell everyone about this shit. <laughs> They're not going to believe this. Uh, maybe they will. I don't know. I'm going back and telling them, though. I ain't staying here. And then Dr. Manhattan says, I, you know, I can't let you do that. You and Rorschach know. immediately means what that, knows what that means. He knows. He knows. He takes off his face. Yep. And he faces it. And you know, Doctor Manhattan could have probably done this in a lot, a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. The fact that he chose total, you know, disintegration and splattery. Mm -hmm. it's a, you know, he doesn't exist. Like Rorschach has been blotted out. Like he's like a, like Ozzy Mandy has said, right? It's the same. Mm -hmm. That's actually what happened. Right. So I, that's why I think that's an allusion to what he knew was going to happen. Yeah, um, and thus we see the end of Rorschach. You know, um, that's it. Won't compromise, but he's the he's the kink. If Rorschach gets back to tell everyone what happened, even though he's unreliable, he can ravel the whole thing and would change. Yeah, just, the, the irony of this situation is just so funny, and we'll get into this in, by the end of the book. But, yeah, well, well it's, it's a great foreshadow to a callback. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> you know, yep. so, um, yeah, so Rorschach, I mean, I'm sorry, um, John Matt in Manhattan, you know, he destroys Rorschach, and then he comes back in to find um you know, the, the, there's still, you know, the TV's talking about the destruction still and everything, just talking about, you know, just matching CNN, Fox News, just talking about this. And then he runs into um, Dan and Lori mm -hmm. in the, um, in the, um, by the pool. pool. Yeah. And then he smiles. He's like, oh, good for them. Yeah. Yeah. And then he walks on water. Mm hmm. Which doesn't seem very Christ-like. <laughs> he doesn't seem like a very Christ-like character at this point. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> then he, he walks up a wall. Walks up a know. wall, walks into Ozzy's room. Mm -hmm. And then Ozymandias says, I was hoping we could talk. And he says, listen, I've made myself... He says, morally, I've made myself feel every death. Every death. And he says, you know, I need you to understand. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Manhattan says, you know, you needn't consider Rorschach. I strongly doubt he'll reach civilization. But uh, but yes, he says uh, he says he probably will reach civilization, which is a lie. He knows he won't reach civilization. Right. So right, here's right. an echo lie, right? Yeah. So yeah. He, so Ozzy says, "Hey, I didn't kill my servants," and he says, hey, "I didn't go to Russia." Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, so he what, probably. What, I what doubt he'll be an issue. Little lies here, you know. <laughs> yeah, Doctor Manhattan comes in and says, "Yep, that's an issue." Anyway, I'm out of here. Then Adrian says, I did it, right? It all worked out in the end. And, and, and uh, Doc says, no, nothing's over. And he leaves. Nope. In the end, nothing ever ends, Adrian. Nothing ever ends. Hey, John, wait, wait, what, what do you mean by... And then John is gone and everything. So it sort of leaves a question in the air. If, if Dr. Manhattan knows the future, does any of this even matter? You know, um, that's what that's what um, Adrian wants. I mean, yeah, that's what Adrian wants to know. Does Ozzy, Ozzy wants to know that did this really even did this my whole plan even matter? Right. If 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 the future it doesn't happen the way I want it. Right. You know. So is it, he's he's saying I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. It's mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. And then John, who can see the future now because mm -hmm. the tachometers are done, right. says nope, it's not, and then teleports away leaving that that sort of like smoke Ex his... ex existentially he's right nothing mm -hmm. ever ends you know so if if that's the question that you're asking um you know adrian i mean this is the answer you know there's no end there's no and, end in anything and you it's know, an nothing answer ever ends. it's an answer that's a firm rebuttal yes of what he said because he, mm -hmm. to for for Adrian to be correct, he has mm -hmm. to end history with this. Mm -hmm. I mean, the stakes are really high to justify his actions. History has to stop. And at the end of history means the end of conflict. And he says it's over. And Dr. Dr. Manhattan says, eh, nothing ends. So you can't. 
the reason you can't do what Adrian's done here is because history never stops. Humanity never stops. And it's because, remember I said, I threw this switch, you throw mm-hmm. the next switch, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Now you've done something evil. Mm-hmm. Well, there's always a next switch. Call Causality. Causality, you know? right? Causality <laughs> and, and morality is an, a never-ending one-way train, right? It so always go in one direction. If, if, if you want to, I mean, I guess until the end of humanity, which is, you know, uh, as far as our version of this Earth, it, there was dinosaurs before, and then, you know, they existed for millions of years until asteroid hit and wiped them out. So, you know, the dawn of humanity came, so no no, no telling how long we're going to be here, but as, as long as we're here and the way that human beings think and act mm-hmm. and react um, and cause and effect happens, this is going to go on, you know? Yep. You know, you you, you think that you had you don't hold the you know the moral ground and everything, and your concern and everything um, about the world is so intrinsic where you feel that you have to um, uh, develop a giant squid because either you fear so either you fear the end of the world so much, or you are so so your hubris your your hubris is so you know high that you feel that you're a god and that you have you could cut you know you you you. Um, Ozzy has control issues. <laughs> mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. feels that he has has the right and uh, ability to control everything. But is he is is Ozzy not seeing beyond his whole plan? You know, he you know he he wants to build this utopia and wants to control that and everything. But is he is his is the fundamental flaw in his plan that he's not seeing the fact that there are going to be humans that are going to oppose him? Mm-hmm. You know, in his sense of utopia, like you can't really think that you're going to unite the billions of human beings into peace. You can't really think like that, Ozzy. Are, are you really being serious? Well, how many people are going to reject it? Because Rorschach rejected this, right? He rejected utopia and said that utopia founded upon lies is not a utopia. Well, he saw the lie, mm-hmm. but, the, but everyone else, you know, um, doesn't know this at this point. Not no. everybody's going to go – not everyone – Veet's not going to be 100% successful in convincing people he's right. Exactly. Uh, he's going to be successful, successful enough to get what he needs done. But when you figure, you know, even to get a president – to elect someone president, you need 48% of the vote. <laughs> so you don't need to win 100% of the hearts and minds, right? You just need to convince enough people that's true that the outliers seem like crazies, right? Hmm, hmm. Fringe or, or, people. Or have an electro, uh, 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 electoral college. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or, or, or just cheat. Whatever. So – or just ask the Russians for help, like uh, Beat did. So, uh, so every right, everything's a little different. So we, we kind of so this conversation we leave Adrian standing mm-hmm. in his you know meditation room, watching mm-hmm. the smoke settle from uh, John's departure, and, and left yeah. to consider that that he may not have uh, his plan may not have been the final you know the final the, stroke the, he thinks the, the nail in the coffin right. Yeah, it may not be over. So that so we we get a little bit of like a this is a little bit of a prologue or, or an epilogue mm-hmm. at the end here where we mm-hmm. see uh, Lori go Lori and Dan go visit her mother. They've got a fake name. They're the Hollises, which is a nice callback to obviously Night Owl One. Uh, it's, it's, it's the sense of humor, you know, and and this is just funny, mm-hmm. you know. It's mm-hmm. it, and it's humor as, as deep and you know dark as is this you know graphic novel is. It still finds ways to um you know present humor. You know when um when the when the maid or whoever you know comes and introduce or make sure that you know this couple you know that um uh, uh what is the mom's name again I forgot Sally <laughs> yeah Sally make sure that Sally knows who this couple is and she's like well I don't know any and then she sees them and then all of a sudden okay yeah there's no one I would rather love to see you know than these wonderful. Um, Mr. and Mrs. and then um, Dan says Hollis. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was just like super hilarious and everything. You know, she yep. she, she just fakes. She she recognizes them, but recognizes that they are in disguise. Right, you know? right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's I been, that was funny. I, I my favorite part of this bag. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. Lori and Sally coming to terms with with the fact that comedians the mother or the father yeah. is is great. But I mean, I'm telling you that Dan Dryberg fetish stuff. Is so he owned he had this like little Tijuana Bible from 1952. He's like, right. I owned this like 30 years ago. I had this. Mm-hmm. It's hilarious, right? It's funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like, it's, 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 it's all funny. it's all it's all part of part and parcel of mm-hmm. his his long term fantasies, right? Yeah, his whole oh, 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 oh. life this has been what he's wanted. He's like Dan is in fact 
playing dress up. This is his. That's there, what there's he's doing. There's no reason why he's doing what he's doing, but for the fact that he wants and likes doing. It. Yeah. So, it's enjoyable yeah. to him. Uh, 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 everyone else, you know, has you know, Lori was forcing it. Sally was, you know, she 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 eventually did it for profit and everything. But mm-hmm. you know, Dan, they, everyone has their reasons for being you know costume adventurers, and it sort of plays on the commentary of why superheroes become superheroes. It's you that know, Batman the, tendency, which is the compulsion, right? Like Batman doesn't Batman because he wants to be Batman. He's right. Batman because he has to be Batman, and I feel like that's or, true or, for, or that he feels that he has to be. You yes, know, to gain his you know sense of agency. Why it's, does he, Peter Parker become Spider Man? Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. why does he feel that he has to to go out and save and you know um you know combat criminals and everything? You know, um his catalyst was Uncle Ben. You know, yep. right? Then Rorschach's catalyst was his mother, and he felt com- a compulsion to do the things he does. But Dan doesn't. Dan could quit. <laughs> Dan has quit. Dan's gone clean before, mm-hmm. and then he's he's back he's back in it. But you but know, yeah, like the Godfather, the I mean, you know, you think that you come back, you know, go out and but they pull you right back in. You know, he loves this man. You know, he picks up the book and you know, as 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 um, you know, Lori, she finally says, "Mom, I found out who my real dad was," mm-hmm. and she says it in such a casual way where she's not angry about it, but it puts it puts pause to Sally. And Sally is immediately like, okay, well, what is she going to think about me? But she has, she has, at this point, because their relationship, Lori and uh, her relationship has been so, you know, contentious and, you know, so combative throughout their whole lives. You know, she reacts in a way where she thinks that Lori is going to be combative again. But Lori has grown. She's, she's at this point where she's, she realizes who she is. She realizes who her father was. And now she realizes that, you know, I am who I am, mom, because of him. You know, right. it's it's not your fault that you know that this happened. I'm born. I was born by you know you guys and everything. So I, I just have to live. You know, just who I, it, she she says, mom. It doesn't matter. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. life, um, people's lives take them to strange places, and you know, just life happens. And you know, Lori's experienced what she's experienced and everything. She can't really judge her mom at this point because right. that's just. That's life. <laughs> well, she also has a new perspective mm-hmm. on, well, on morality and, and history and, and time. Yes. And she's yes. been granted that, you know, Dr. Manhattan gave her that glimpse of what it's like mm-hmm. to experience your memories as one simultaneous, you mm-hmm. know, your life is one simultaneous moment, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think that perspective changed a lot of things about her. And I mean, uh, obviously, Sally could never hate Eddie Blake because it gave her Lori. Yes. And so she could never hate him. Yes. Yes. No matter the circumstance of how, you know, um, of of, you know, what, you know, we 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 rape is 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 a bad thing. That's just let's just get that out the way. At least. Yes, That's I my, agree. Um, that I agree with that statement. You know, it's, it's a bad thing. You know, um, it's an unfortunate thing that happens with women and some men and everything, too. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an unfortunate thing that, you know, that human beings feel that they have to 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 do things to to accentuate their pleasures or whatever you know that they have to take control and you know harm other human beings just to get you know get off or whatever but Lori is obviously 10 years younger than like you know what i mean like so it's it's not like that act is what produced Lori, right Lori was born in like 1948 so well, it wasn't I, that one incident right yeah it wasn't that it's an one incident, incident from the past of their relationship mm-hmm. but it's not like I, I, what I'm what I'm inferring from this is that they later had a relationship, right? Well, that's that that's was my not whole, as it wasn't rape. That's that's my whole point. Yeah, it's life is complicated. You mm-hmm. know, she has such a complicated relationship with Eddie. She loved Eddie. You know, um, in which we'll we'll see when she kisses the um, you know, picture and everything. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but their their relationship started out as is something of you know just that what we we think of as reprehensible and everything. You know, right. but she still had feelings for this guy. You know, mm-hmm. she had um a baby. <laughs> she had a kid. You know, but uh, you know what you know with this man and everything. Right. Um, and then we see, you know, Lori and um, Dan leave and, you know, they talk about having children and, you know, um, see um, this this third panel in that conversation where she says, maybe I ought to wear a leather mask and carry a gun. Mm-hmm. That's that's why I think she was thinking about who she is when she picked that gun up off the street. Right, right? Great call she back. I'm, the man. part of me is the comedian. <laughs> great call back, man. Oh, man, that is hey, 
hey, stuff you pick up. Yeah, absolutely, right? It's stuff, stuff, stuff you pick up. Wow, that is crazy. It's um, nuts. So, but so, yeah, it's. It, mm-hmm. So now we get this. So, so that's and that's kind of the end of for you know the main characters, right? Their story ends here. So so we see. So the, the um, last bit you know, of epilogue is in the New Kiss, Frontiersman office. Uh, the um. And we see Sally kiss the picture of the comedian, which tells us that she really um yeah. had deep feelings for you know the comedian. You there? And this was a way of um, um. You see her, Scott? Yeah, I'm here. I'll ask you for a second. Yeah. So so she show show yeah yeah. So she had deep feelings for the comedian, in which we see the lipstick come off her, you know, lips and everything. And then the last panel on page 30, we see her, you know, weeping about the death of the comedian, which is the um, catalyst of this whole graphic novel. And the nostalgia, um, that nostalgia scent is sitting right behind her. It's in mm-hmm. the frame, the, all these frames, right? Except for the close up frame. Right. The nostalgia sitting back the bed, that smell of nostalgia. She's, mm-hmm. she's, she, she's thinking about Eddie, but she's thinking about her time as a young yeah. person and what, what it was like. Yeah. to to participate in these adventures and and you a know. great a great commentary on what you as you get older you know you start to reflect on life and um you know Sally's whole thing is about I don't want to reflect on the bad things I want to reflect on the good things of you know what what my life is because my life is eventually going to end at some point sooner than later because she's not young anymore mm-hmm. you know she's looking at the fact of um, I'm gonna look at the bright side of things. That's why we see everything in her her panels. We see the brightness, whereas like all the other panels, we see like darkness and everything. Notice the um colors and everything to Lori's house. I'm sorry, to um Sally's house is yellow or is red. You know, we see light. We see um you know not many shadows and everything. You know, she she's um um she's reflecting on like the good things that have happened in her life and everything in her retirement home. Um. So yeah, that's that's basically what we're seeing, and then like I said, this, this last panel, like you said, we're seeing the nostalgia in the background. We're seeing like her, um, the 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 picture with um the lipstick of her on specifically on the comedian and everything, and she's mm-hmm. basically just that's really the last thing that we're going to see as far as like you know these costume heroes, and then we you know the epilogue to the epilogue. <laughs> All right, the very end. Is uh, Seymour and the guy and the editor of the New Frontiersman arguing about what we're going to do? It's hard to put out a crazy whack job right wing newspaper in a world where there's no conflict. Well, 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 just back up a little bit. So okay. we, we we got page thirty one that pretty much just goes through like um, is this Manhattan still we're looking at? Right? Yeah, it's, it's we see New pyramid York. construction. We see um, you know construction going on and everything. You know, R R to run in eighty eight. <laughs> right. You know, um, in the um, News Gazette thing. Um, we're seeing like, you know, one world, one accord. We're seeing like this is the time that um, this is um, the time. These are the feelings. Millennium. So millennium is taking over. Nostalgia is like, you know, uh, um, 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 uh, uh, I guess a fragrance or a way of looking at life. You know, it's Beat's looking- new fragrance. It's from Ad- it's from Adrian. It's a fr- this right, is his right. forward looking new. We're no longer looking back. We're looking forward. Yes, yes, yes. We're seeing like the graffiti, New Deal. We're seeing, um, you know, in the um, sixth panel, we see Quantum Jump, which is like a leap forward and everything. Yep. Everything is like looking forward. But on the um, like the seventh panel in the on that page 31, we see on the ground, New York survivors reveal nightmare under, you know, such and such. Um, we're seeing tell a new tales from the um, morgue or what have you, you know, mm-hmm. comic. They see um, that on the left. It says, "Watch the skies." Yeah, watch the skies and everything. We're seeing different verbiage. Um, I can't really tell how long this has been since you know the um, mm-hmm. the, the squid probably monster not, and everything. Probably not that long. Yeah, not that long and everything. But we see the um you know the redhead guy come into you know the um, Pioneer Publishing and <laughs> we we see um you know the editor talk about um. You know the three million that's died and everything, and mm-hmm. you know he's still you know the 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 J. Georgia James, <laughs> yeah, the, you know grumpy. You know uh, we got to put something out, and you know um, and he's t- he's talking about you know how everyone is is all in one accord thing. You know he makes this comment like, oh no, you got to fill two more pages to fill thanks to this goddamn ass kicking accord. You yeah. know he he's upset because you know the 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 propaganda or or whatever he was putting out there has now been circumvented because of all this. But that just goes to show you that not everyone is on board with everything. You know, 
everyone right. is not trying to you know be you know in this sort of quote unquote utopia that um that Ozzy is trying to present to the world. But well, here's still yeah. Go ahead. Here's two hilarious things from these three panels on the top here, right on page 30, 32, the last page. Mm-hmm. He says nobody's allowed to say bad things about the good old buddies the Russians, which means censorship is there. <laughs> and then the RR that's running for president in nineteen eighty eight is Robert Redford, <laughs> not, not Ronald Reagan, not Ronald Reagan you know. who was the actual president when this was written. This was mm-hmm. in eighty five, eighty six. Um, and then Seymour is told to just pick a, pick something from the crank files, right? Mm-hmm. And then Rorschach's journal is right there, and we say, "I leave it entirely in your hands." And then uh, we we see the ketchup from um you know his burger drop mm-hmm. on his shirt, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it goes right directly um on the uh, on the eye portion, and which is a callback obviously to um comedians button and how it's really if you really want to think about it, comedy is funny, you know comedy is just so funny how through all this this may this this if if he publishes we because we don't know what's happening you know this is the final panel you know on the um in the in the watchman you know um graphic novel we don't know if he's going to publish this um journal but his hand is cl- you know close to it um so if this does get published this undoes everything that ozzy has tried to accomplish mm-hmm. and throughout these panels that we, we 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 see about um you know with um with Doc killing, you know, Rorschach and saying, okay, um, you know, we just got to eliminate everybody and every, everything that has come, um, that who has knowledge of this and, you know, the, the costume, like, like Dan and Lori, they just got to keep the secret, keep the lie going and everything. So nothing happens, Mm -hmm. but this may potentially undo everything. If this, this guy chooses to publish this, it's the thing that can, it's going to, I mean, I, it would think that if you publish something like that in a, in a journal like that, you know, it, it, one, how could you believe it's real? Two, you'd start pulling the threads, right? Mm-hmm. So if you start pulling the threads, what would you find? Would you find anything? Could you, could you find like, oh, this happened in the Center for Spatial Studies? Could you, I mean, without Dr. Manhattan's help, could, could you unravel this? That's the, I think that's a question that maybe the show hopefully will answer. That's well, uh, the show does. so, so not, not, so if the show never came about, so. Right. How do we as human beings think um, and, and, and believe lies? The bigger the lie, the more do we believe. So, yeah. so Ozzy has presented a lie that is so big that he gets everyone in the world, you know, quote unquote, to, you know, to believe it and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the journal represents a truth. Yes. That um, if presented. Um, can can be such a big enough. Uh, it could be the it, it has the same causality and it could be such a big enough thing that if presented it doesn't necessarily have to present um you know um um um, um uh, spaces where you know you could trace back things to to Ozzy Mandias and everything all the idea just needs to be presented and put out there that this is it is possible that this guy has done something to create this 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 um this big lie that basically would undo everything. Would it be so enough? It, do, it, do, it doesn't have to be proven, but it's still uh, a, a small, uh, uh, a seed that could potentially grow to conspiracy theorists out there, to people who have had doubts about this whole thing, that, mm-hmm. um, that, that something has happened that, that, that um, it presents the other side of it, the other side right. of the, the other lie, basically. Yep. I think that's true. And I think that, you know, to tell a lie this big, you you know the the bigger the lie that you tell, like you have to bury it right. The the deeper the hole you have to dig, and the more dirt you need to get on you, right? right. Mm-hmm. So Ozymandias has essentially told the biggest lie in the history of the world. Mm-hmm. Like, there's never been a lie this big before. Right. He's completely created and fabricated something out of whole cloth, mm-hmm. and he's used violent means to silence people. Mm-hmm. So you know. If someone were to start looking into it, there would be a lot of open questions. There'd be a lot of missing information. A lot of people would be dead, and you'd be hard pressed to decide, mm-hmm. you know, when this happened. I mean, if I'm, if people start asking me questions and they're like, "Where's this? You know, where are these writers? Where are these artists? Where are these scientists?" I'd be like, they were at the Center for Spatial Studies in New York, and when the thing came in, it destroyed everything. They're all dead. They're all gone. They were just vaporized. Right. 
So the, you know, that's what I'm thinking they're going to probably he would that's what I I think he would say. I I, I my question, you know, my my the ending for something like this mm-hmm. is always the question is always, you know, how how long do you think this status quo would last? You know, how long could you make something last like this without having to reseed, mm-hmm. right? Without mm-hmm. having to have another attack. Right. That that's the open question. And I think what 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 I think what Doctor Manhattan means is that right mm-hmm. is you can set up humanity in the golden era, mm-hmm. but eventually chaos will come back. You can only I, tamp down the forces of that for so long before memories get too short, and people start forgetting things. Yeah. And then next thing you know, where well, you're right back to square one where you were. So yeah, yeah. So because, the morality of doing what what Ozymandias does is answered by that because nothing it doesn't doesn't resolve anything because it's only well, a temporary well, fix well it, it never ends i mean and it goes to show you like i was saying how you know as hubris is that much where he think that you know is this going to be a forever thing you know mm-hmm. like why even go through all this period you know it's either you're gonna it, it, there's going to be death and destruction anyhow some way whether it's by nuclear destruction or you causing it right <laughs> right you know so um so why why are so through the, all the efforts and everything? Uh, well, it provided us a very great story to read. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but um, but it, it, it asks the question of is it was it really worth it, Ozzy? Is you know, Ozzy, you know, was it really worth it? Because like you said, humanity, you know, has short memories. I guess. If, if, is, is, well, because we you, die. Yeah, we die. I don't know how, you know, that has to be the reason. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we start forgetting it's, things that happened 200 years. I mean, that's why. Well, well, history dies out, and then, you know, because, you know, things were written down by man, you know, mm-hmm. um, are you necessarily going to believe everything history says, you know? Right. Um, because it was written by man. And, um, you know, they say, if you don't know who your history, you're doomed to repeat it and everything. Um, men start to, 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 to get their hubris in the different ways as well, mm-hmm. where we think we can control, you know, history. You know, we right. can rewrite history and present it as something else besides what it actually was. You know, if we can forget in certain parts of history, you know, we take certain elements and apply it to today's time and justify the reasons, well, they did like this back then. Well, when they may not have done it at that point, you know, that at that certain instance, at a certain time, because it was written by man, you know, so right. that version of history, if you want to talk about the Bible, for instance, or whatever, you know, um, you know, that's, that's a whole podcast in itself and everything, but oh, yes. somebody had to write it down. You know, <laughs> and, you know, they have a quote unquote King James version out there. Version is the optimal thing because it was a version of, I guess, a history that may or may not have happened. But mm-hmm. people still follow it. People still use that as a way to justify their actions today. You know, um, and eventually Ozzy's whole point is going to be undone because that's just the nature of humanity. Right. You know? Right. We, we we have to live. And, you know, humans live and humans die and, you know, the next group of humans come, you know, and the, everything just starts all over again. Such an excellent graphic novel. Amazing. Just want to thank you guys for listening to us for these past 12 issues. Um, me and Scott, we've been really, really, really grateful for you guys um paying attention to us and as we do love watchmen and love talking about everything with watchmen make sure you follow us at nerdcyclopedia um uh, email us at nerdcyclop at, at <laughs> email us at nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com you know couldn't say that right there and also um uh watching watchmen at gmail.com um follow us at nerdcyclopedia everywhere on your social media outlets and make sure that you leave us feedback we definitely love the feedback we get from you guys so make sure you leave us some feedback um the very next episode will be the last episode of this season and then next season uh, which is really in about a couple weeks we'll be talking about the season premiere of Watchmen on hbo the season um premiere debut all right so um um see you when we see you This is your friendly neighborhood, Sam. Speak for Scott.